Hey guys, how's it going? So today I wanted to talk about the iPad Pro and that's probably no surprise because my whole channel is about the iPad. But specifically, the iPad Pro has been out for two years now. The 12.9 inch model launched in November 2015. It was announced in September of that year though. So we've had it for uh, over two years now. So I kind of wanted to talk about where it's been, where it's going and kind of where it is today. Personally for me, I think the iPad is the future of computing. I think um, iOS, it's touch, that is the future. Apple has talked about it, Tim Cook has talked about it, some of the execs of Apple have talked about it, how they feel, and I agree with that. I know it sounds super Apple fanboyish, whatever. Obviously, by doing these videos and showing that I've been working off the iPad for all this time, I think I think that kind of proves that I definitely feel that way too. Why is it the future of computing? Well, I think it's all based around touch. And I think touch input, I think Apple is right when they say touch is the future of computing. All of our smartphones are built around it, our computers are built around it. Every device that we use is basically trying to input touch in some way. Heck, even refrigerators have tablets built into them now. So I think it's touch. So let's talk about where the iPad is today. So first off, iOS. iOS the first iPad Pro shipped with iOS 9 that had the first version of multitasking on it, had picture in picture, had keyboard shortcuts, all that stuff was fantastic. But today we have iOS 11 and iOS 11 brings advanced multitasking, drag and drop, the dock, files. These, this stuff is absolutely terrific. It's definitely pro. It's definitely geared around the pro users. So I'm in love with iOS 11. But I know there's some people that use the iPad that aren't a big fan of iOS 11. They think it's a little bit slower than what iOS 9 had. And I, I understand their point and I see where they're coming from. But for me personally, I think it works really well considering I use apps in pairs a lot. I move things around. Drag and drop is very intuitive and it works really well with this kind of work that I do. So personally for me, I give iOS 11 a big thumbs up, two, two thumbs up actually. And um, I think where where they're working on that is is definitely fantastic. Hardware wise, I think the app, I think everyone can probably agree the iPad knocks it out of the park every single time a new version comes out. Uh, A10 chips, um, they're absolutely fantastic. They're incredibly fast. The Geekbench scores are just phenomenal. Um, I absolutely love how fast these iPads are. The ProMotion uh, display in them looks absolutely beautiful. It's kind of weird using a ProMotion display and then going to one that doesn't have it. It's, it's very strange doing that. Keyboard support in iOS is fantastic. Um, you have Bluetooth keyboards, they're all supported. If you have the camera connection kit, you can plug in mechanical keyboards or USB keyboards really. Um, so if you have a specific special kind of keyboard you like, you can plug it in using that. The one area that I think they really need to work on is the smart connector. The smart connector is great. I love the smart connector keyboards that I have, but there's not very many of them. There's the ones by Apple and then there's the couple by Logitech and that's it. I think Apple really needs to work with their partners to get more smart connector keyboards out there. From what I understand, it's a licensing thing and Apple's charging a lot in order to make smart connector keyboards and there's not a lot of iPad Pros, so manufacturers aren't wanting to make smart connector keyboards because there's not a big audience for them. So it's kind of this whole run around thing. So I think Apple really needs to kind of suck it up a little bit and work with manufacturers to make more smart connector keyboards so it actually gets the ball rolling on these iPads. Because I haven't found a smart connector keyboard that I think checks off all my boxes yet. The Apple Pencil I think is fantastic. I always kind of get a little bit of um, pushback for some people when I talk about the Apple Pencil because I get a little too excited about it and I talk about how it's the best stylist ever. When I say that, I'm talking about things like latency. Um, the, the Apple Pencil has the lowest latency of all the stylists on the market. So when you're using it, that means it actually feels like a pen or a pencil. Like you can, it, it feels like you're actually drawing right on the display with it and that it's not like trailing behind. That That's kind of what I talk about with that. I know there are other stylists that have features built into them and things like that. I'm not necessarily worried about that. When I use the Apple Pencil, I want it to feel like I'm actually using a pencil. I, yeah, there could be features built into the pencil, like there could be buttons and things like that. I, I don't necessarily need to have buttons on the Apple Pencil. I think it's a beautiful looking device. I know it's completely round and a lot of people don't like that because they think it'll roll off the desk. 
it's never actually rolled off my desk. I think you'll either have this or you won't, is dongles. Um, for me personally, I use a couple of them. I use the USB camera connection kit so I can plug microphones and keyboards into my iPad. I also use the SD card reader so I can move photos and videos off of my nice camera if I ever use that. Dongles are sometimes, some people need them, some don't. I think Apple's done a very good job for most users not needing it with um, things like AirDrop and stuff like that so you just don't have to use them. Then there's stuff like AirPods so you don't even really need to plug headphones into the iPad. So I think Apple's done a really good job on minimizing the dongles, but if you're as kind of an edge case user like me, they're there if you need them. And, I, and I'm totally okay with that. I'm 100, I'm fine with that. I'm, I, I understand the way that, where they're going with it, and I think it works out just fine. The area that I think the iPad needs the biggest growth in is pro apps. So we have apps that I use today like LumaFusion, Affinity Photo, Ulysses Ferrite, Bez, um, Coda, Notability, those are all pro apps in my opinion that I use almost every day or every day. And I think they're fantastic, but a lot of them, like in the case of like LumaFusion, if it was to go away tomorrow, I would probably be, I'd be out of luck really. I'd, I'd have to go grab a MacBook Pro because I wouldn't be able to edit videos anymore. Uh, no other multi-track video editor. There's only LumaFusion on the iPad. So what I wanna see from Apple is Apple working with third parties to make more professional applications Things like Premiere Pro, bring Final Cut Pro, um, Illustrator, bring development applications to the iPad. I wanna see more of that stuff on the iPad. I wanna see more of that stuff in the days to come. And I think Apple working with developers is the way to go. Help them um, push those applications. M make them at the top of the App Store and, and the new Today View, show them there all the time. Um, I, think, I think Pro apps could really thrive on the iPad, but I think Apple needs to be the one to take the step and kind of push developers to make them. Because of all these things, all these three things, so iOS, the hardware, and pro applications, because of those three things, I'm able to work off my iPad. And not just work off my iPad and like struggling and trying to make it work, but I'm able to work off my iPad really easily. Like it, it's, it's an, a joy for me to work off of it. That's why I chose this device over working off my old MacBook Pro. I love the iPad, and but I think if one of those things was to go away, it'd make my life really hard. If iOS was to get worse, or the hardware wasn't get to develop as fast enough, or Pro apps were to go away, my life would be really hard on the iPad or non-existent. And that's a little scary. Um, and I guess that could be said about any computing platform, but iOS is still new, especially Pro iOS, Pro iPads. They're still new enough that one of those things could technically go away. Now, I don't think it will. I'm not trying to scare anybody because I don't think any of those are going away anytime soon. In fact, I think all of those are going to be thriving here very quickly. Going back to that point, I think Apple needs to work and they need to push, push development forward. And I'm not saying they're not. I definitely think they are, but they're just the secret of company. So you don't really see that happening in the background. Um, it just, you know, WWDC comes around and goes, here's a whole bunch of stuff we've been working on. So I think um, iOS 12 and, and um, the next WWDC, we're gonna see a lot of that. Speaking of iOS 12, I think what we're gonna see a lot of is refinements. I think we're gonna see a lot of things getting tweaked um, that are already in the iPad Pro. We're gonna see multitasking get tweaked and drag and drop and stuff like that to be a little more intuitive, to be faster, things like that. I think Apple really does listen to the community and I think they are going to be working on that. I also think because they bought the workflow application, um, we're gonna see automation built into the iPad. This is something I'm really excited about. I hope they just didn't buy workflow for the talent. I really hope they bought, bought them for the talent for what the talent's good for. And the talent, that the people that were working on the workflow app really understand automation and how to make it easy to use for everybody. I really wanna see built-in automation. I think system-wide automation, something like Automator, what is on the Mac now, would be really cool on the iPad. So that's kind of where I wanna see the software go. I think the hardware-wise, we actually had a rumor a couple weeks ago about the 2018 iPads. And the iPads are supposed to be edge-to-edge -edge design, kind of like the iPhone 10 with Face ID, the new A11, 10 chip or the A11, I'm sorry, A11X chip. Uh, the iPhone 10 has me all thrown off every time I see an X now. Um, the A11X chip is supposed to be incredibly fast. I'm really excited about these iPads. I think they're going to be, um, I think they're gonna be a workhorse of an iPad. I think they're gonna be really powerful. So I'm excited about the 2018 iPads, but what I'd like to see in the far future, and when I say far future, I probably mean like five years maybe, um, are desktop iPads. And what I mean by that, maybe a 24 to 27 inch iPad 
that stays plugged into the wall all the time. That's not portable. You don't you don't put you don't put a 27 inch iPad in your backpack. It stays plugged into the wall like a desktop, like an iMac or a Mac Pro. But having something plugged into the wall all the time means you can have a really crazy powerful processor, lots of RAM, and all that stuff just eats up energy because it's plugged into the wall all the time. And I think with those with that combination, I think we'd have a workhorse just desktop powerful machine that could rival Mac Pros and could do the thing a Mac Pro could do. That's kind of what I want, where I want to see the iPad go. I'm curious to see what you guys want from the iPad. What what are you excited about in, in the next year or the next 10 years? Where do you want to see this platform go? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.